Now that you can see fireworks shooting across your screen, it's time to reveal the difficulty element. You see, every game needs some challenge, and in our case the challenge is to destroy fireworks in groups of the same colour. We're going to make it so players can select only one colour of firework at a time, so if they choose two red, then touch green, the two red will become deselected. So, the challenge will be to select and detonate fireworks based on their colour, and as you'll see shortly, we're going to heavily bias scores so players receive many more points for larger groups. What we're going to code next is the touch handling method, check touches. We're going to call this from touches began and touches moved, so you're just going to either tap select fireworks or just swipe across the screen. The method needs to start by figuring out where in the scene the player touches and what nodes are at that point. It will then loop through all the nodes under the point to find any with the name firework. When it finds one, it'll set its name to be selected rather than firework and change its color blend factor value to zero. That will disable the color blending entirely, making the firework white. So let's write check touches now. I'll go ahead and make some space and we'll say func check touches. This takes a touches parameter, which is a set of UI touch. The same thing we'll get from touches began and touches moved. First, We'll read out the touch by saying guard let touch is touches.first else return. So bail out immediately if we couldn't find a touch for some reason. Then we'll figure out where the touch was by saying let location is touch.location in self in our game scene. And then let nodes at point be equal to nodes at location. So we get back at a list of all these sprite kit nodes under their finger. And now what we want to do is go through that array and find all the sprite nodes that are fireworks. Now, if we just use a regular for loop here, we'd have problems. For example, if I said something like this, uh, for node in nodes at point, then uh, node.color blend factor is zero. You'll see color blend factor doesn't exist for this type. Node, in this case, is actually just a regular SK node not an SK sprite node, which means there is no color blend factor for it. We can't use that here. What we want to do instead is make a special kind of for loop. We still want to loop over nodes at point, but as we do, we want to typecast each node in there as an SK sprite node. And I'm going to go through the loop if that element is a sprite node. If it isn't, we'll go to the next element. And in Swift, this has a very curious syntax. And I say curious in sort of air quotes, because the first time you see it, it's quite confusing because it has three keywords back to back for, case, and let. For, case, let. And it looks like this for, case, let node as SK sprite node. What that means is it'll make a new constant, let node, which will be an SK sprite node only if that condition is true, and then run the loop for the item. So for case let node as SK sprite node, for case let. I know it's a lot of first three keywords back to back. It looks odd, but it simply means attempt to do some sort of work. In our case, SK sprite node, and only if that succeeds, run the body of our loop. What it means is inside this loop now, node will be an SK sprite node we're guaranteed to have a sprite in here. So we can start by saying guard node.name is equal to firework. Else, continue. So get out of this loop immediately if we're dealing with anything that's not firework, like the background, for example. If we're still here, we know this is a firework, we can now say node.name is now selected. So we now know this thing is a selected firework, and node.color blend factor is zero. And zero will make it go back to its default texture color, which is plain white. Now, most of that code, apart from, of course, the four case let, that's old news. But that's because I missed out the logic to handle ensuring that players select only one color of firework at a time. This code here will let them select all the fireworks, regardless of their color. So we really need to insert a second loop just before here, node.name is selected. This will be an inner loop, 
And we've got to be really careful, of course, the inner loops can run thousands of times by accident. If you have, you know, 100 times, that's okay. If you have another one that does 200 times, that's okay. If you put the 200 inside the 100, you now have 20,000 iterations of your loop. And that's almost certainly not okay. Here, though, we're going to have maybe two or three items in our outer loop and a maximum of 10 or so in the inner loop. So we're quite safe. And remember, this inner loop needs to ensure the player can select only one firework color at a time. So if they select red, then another red, both are selected. But if they select the green, we need to deselect the first two because they're red. So the loop will go through every firework in our fireworks array, then find the firework image inside it. If you remember, that array holds a container node, and each container node holds a firework image and its spark emitter. If the firework was selected and is a different color to the firework that was just tapped, it will put its name back to firework and put its color blend factor back to one, so it resumes its old color. So just before we have this node name value here, we're going to add our new loop. We'll say for parent in fireworks. This is our fireworks array SK node, and the parent is the container node for that sprite and its emitter. Now inside here we'll say guard let firework is parent dot children dot first as SK sprite node else continue. So exit the loop immediately if we can't find the sprite node inside the parent node. If we're in here, we can now say, are you currently selected and not equal to our new sprite color? So we'll say, if firework.name is equal to selected and the fireworks color is not equal to the new node color, then firework.name is equal to firework and firework.color blend factor is one. Put it back to being a regular unselected firework with its default color. And that's the entire method. So what we need to do now is make sure it's called. To make that happen, we have to add methods touches began and touches moved. And all they'll do is send their touch information on to check touches like this. I'll say, uh, touches began, super dot touches began, pass it on to our super class in case it wants to do something with it. Those touches with its event and check touches with touches. Our touches moved, similar thing, super dot touches moved with touches and event and check touches, touches. So it'll pass on this touches set we get given onto the check touches method. There's one more thing with the code before moving on, and that's the update method. This is because we have to handle the fireworks the player doesn't destroy. And our solution is simple enough. If they get past 900 points vertically up, we consider them dead and remove them from the fireworks array and from the scene. There is one curious quirk here though, and it's down to how you remove items from an array. When removing items, we're gonna loop through the array backwards rather than forwards. And the reason for this is that array items move down when you remove an item. So if you have one, two, three, four, and remove three, then four moves down to become the new three. If you're counting forwards, this is a problem because you just checked three and you wanna move on, but there's now a new three and possibly no longer a four. If you're counting backwards, you just move on to two. It's much, much easier. Now I should say I chose 900 points here rather than 800 or something else because it's nice to give players a little bit of extra time when making important actions. So it's possible that the top firework is at 890 and the bottom one's still on screen and being manipulated. So at least this way the player has the best possible window in which to make all their selections. So let's add an update method now. We'll say update with current time, a time interval. Inside there, we're gonna loop over all the fireworks using the enumerated method to get them back with its index and its value and reverse the whole thing. So we'll say for index firework in fireworks dot enumerated dot reversed. If firework dot position dot y is greater than 900, then 
fireworks.remove at that index and firework.remove from parent, i.e. get out of the game scene.